Hello, welcome back to Far Horizons Gaming. My name is Ben, and today we're going to continue on Suzerain. Last time we left off, our economy just went on a massive downslide, and looks like we've got a war on our borders. So, we're going to pick up with a meeting of potential alliances to attempt to deal with said conflict. I was sitting right across from David in the White Room after he scheduled an urgent meeting. I knew that the matter must have been serious. He insisted on waiting for Yosef and Lucy, and so we did. Lucy entered the room with Yosef by his side. Mr. President, we came as fast as we could. Mr. President, Mr. Vichy, what's going on? David cleared his throat. Welcome, everyone. Due to the potential ramifications, I wanted everyone to be present for this meeting. We have received an envoy from Arcasia. They are requesting a state visit. Judging from the current climate, it's not hard to see what this is about. ATO is always trying to expand its influence, after all. They will most likely try to convince us to join. In addition, as part of the state visit, Dwight Walker will, of course, meet with you in person, Mr. President. There is a lot we could gain from this visit. Our buddy will come asking us for cooperation under guise of enforcing the demands to join ATO. This will antagonize half the world against us. We are going to be at the forefront of the battle. With the courage of our troops and allies, we can defend our nation against anyone. I assure you, we don't need any outside help. Definitely not from Dwight Walker. Let's see what he wants first. I'll decide when I talk to him. We need to be careful. Mr. Walker never gives anything for free. There will be some concessions for sure. Mr. Vichy, you are our most experienced foreign policy expert. What's your take on this? What do you think is the right action? World tension is increasing rapidly, Mr. President, and I am worried about the future. One misstep in the whole world might be engulfed in chaos. I am afraid it might not be possible to stay neutral in this case. Our geopolitical position is simply too important. Soon we will have to take a side. If we don't pick a side, we may end up right in the middle of a potential conflict. I am of the, op the opinion this is an opportunity we can't miss. It all boils down to your decision. But I say we should at least listen to what Dwight Walker has to say. Lucian, what do you think? We heard our experts. You are the one who has to decide, sir. Uh, I mean, we're just meeting to talk, so very well, accept their offer. I will send a response immediately. Then there is a tiny detail we need to get over with. How should we welcome the delegation, sir? Eh, the plain welcome will suffice. They're the ones requesting this. As you wish. I've taken a note. I think that's all for today. Thank you all for attending. As we dispersed, the world map hanging on the wall of the room caught my attention. I walked over to it. How often were the lines in the world map redrawn over the recent decades? What about the future? Okay, it's not quite what I was expecting, but still potentially important. Alright, country overview. We have expanded human rights. Uh, one of the best human rights situations in the region. That's fantastic. Order, we have reduced crime. Yeah, so that's neutral, apparently, but that's okay. Alright, let's check the news here first. Let's see, we got one somewhere in here from the whole sword post. Uh, yeah, there we go. Swordish plane shot down. A Swordish airplane has been shot down by Rumbergian anti aircraft guns, allegedly for violating Rumbergian airspace. Government officials said the airplane was shot inside the airspace of Swordland. A plane was shot down and was flying near Holligan over the territory of Sordland by an anti-aircraft missile. The pilot did not threaten Rumberg in any way, said Josef Lancy, the Minister of Defense. Despite the revealed evidence from the Swordish officials, the Queen of Rumberg, Beatrice Livingston, had the guts to claim that her plane was shot for violating the airspace. This is a truly heinous act purposely done by rivals in the north, a tragic event of serious consequences for Sordland Rumberg relations. Alright, and I guess we gotta go meet with President Walker now. The door of the car opened and flashes went off. Dwight Walker, president of Arcasia, head of ATO, came out of the car, smiling and waving at the enormous crowd that gathered. It was not every day an Arcasian president came to visit Swordland. President Walker stepped on the carpet and started to make his way towards us. 
Along with Monica, I started walking over to meet him midway. Finally, I was in reaching distance to the most powerful men in the world. He looked at Monica first, bowed and kissed her hand for a second longer than I liked. Mr. Vane, if you told me I would get to meet you with your lovely wife, I would have come sooner. I'm charmed, Miss Vane. Oh my, thank you, Mr. Walker. It's a pleasure to meet you. No, the pleasure's all mine, Miss Vane. I hope your wife and the family is well. Yeah, very well, Miss Rain, thank you. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it here today. And who do we have here? Mr. President, it is so good to finally meet with you. We shook hands. Welcome to Sorbland. Thank you. He turned and looked around. I was almost going to think that you weren't expecting me. I am a simple man, not really a fan of extravagance. Me, Mr. President, I am the exact opposite. He laughed. We started walking towards the reception hall in the palace. Our path was cleared of people at once. He was simply looking around at the extraordinary interior design of the Marine Palace. The statues, paintings, various ornaments filled both sides of the corridor. We passed the corridor and entered the reception hall. The crowd inside was composed of various politicians and state figures. Upon our entry, they started clapping. Dry martinis were handed to both of us. Everyone, let's give a warm welcome to our guest of honor. The people started clapping. Thank you, President Rain. It is really good to be here. And thank you, everyone, for the warm welcome. With another thunderous round of applause, the jazz band started playing. President Walker and I separated, started mingling with the crowd. Reception was in full swing. After some time chatting with the attendees, President Walker approached us. He bowed before my wife. Miss Rain, may I call you Monica? She looked over at me before smiling at him. Yes, of course, if I can call you Dwight. He took her hand and they started dancing. I turned around to talk to the waiter. I was in, into my third martini when I heard a whistle. I turned around and saw Monica dancing very closely with President Walker. All eyes in the room were on them. President Walker grabbed Monica's waist. President Walker, why don't we have a chat somewhere quiet? Uh, right when we're getting to the good parts. Fine, let's have a chat. President and I swapped our drinks for early maroon 30-year-olds. I knew a special spot. With the drinks in hand, we went down the stairs to the basement. Gradually, the music and the sound of the party started to fade away. We arrived at a cozy little corner office with not much inside other than a table and comfortable chairs. He took a seat and I followed suit. He pulled out two cigars. I took one of them. He pulled out a Rippo lighter and lit my cigar before lighting his own. I heard you got into a scandal. Yes, it was a truly unfortunate chain of events. Indeed, he grinned. Relax, it's just a scandal, and I'm no reporter. I just made it out alive of a bad one myself. Oof, it was a rough one, too. You get used to it. A couple people in prison, a couple people silenced. You know the drill. Cheers to survival, then, Mr. Rain. We clinked our glasses and took a sip. Ah, this is a really good one. Very smoky. I like it. Never had an earlier maroon before? He took a puff from his cigar, filling the small room with smoke. Definitely miles better than Fox and Onion Whiskey. But I like lesbian whiskey more. It pairs better with their cigars. You see, Mr. Rain, whiskeys are a little bit like countries. Some are stronger, some are weaker. Some are older, some are younger. Many are complex, but sometimes simple is the best. I personally like stronger whiskeys in general. That's why I like this one. Yes, it is definitely promising. But whatever you drink in the end, it all boils down to your own taste. And I assure you, Mr. Rain, my sense of taste is very refined. What type of whiskey do you like? I like complex flavors. As good as they are, they can get tiring. He tugged at his tie to loosen it a little. You know I am here. I want to make you an offer. I'm listening. Good. Listen closely. Times are changing, and so is the balance of the world. Soon, instead of a fractured world, we'll see more united world. There's us, ATO, against them. I want you by our side, the winning side. I think there's much we can achieve together, and you have shown me the proof. A friend of Lesbia is our friend as well. If you accept, I'd like to extend you a warm welcome to ATO as a full member state. This, of course, comes along with lots of privileges and responsibilities. 
Ezio, we protect each other. We have a mutual defense clause in the case of war. Join us, Mr. Rain. You'll have the entire backing of Ezio. Soldiers, jet fighters, warships, whatever you like. During peacetime, you'll see the effects even more. Our combined production output will benefit both Soldan and Ezio. We'll have free trade zone agreements, free visa access, investments, you name it. All I ask in return is mutual loyalty to one another in the pact. The Sordashalm's forces will be a member of the ATO military structure. All branches, be it air, navy, army, will collaborate with the Alliance Network. We provide assistance and training for free. Our armies will learn how to fight together and be stronger than ever in the face of millennial threats. Let's make history here tonight. What do you say? Is that all you're asking for? I was expecting more demands. But why, Mr. Rain? In my mind, we're already aligned. Where I'm coming is more so from the perspective of friendship and stability, Mr. Makopa. There's much to gain for both of us, which makes us a perfect partnership. Right, this might be a very bad idea, but we're going for it. Maybe it'll help the economy. Very well, I accept. And that's what I'd like to hear. We stood up and shook hands. Welcome to ATO, Mr. Rain. Welcome home. Cheers to newfound partnerships. We clinked our glasses and downed the remaining whiskey. Now it's starting to taste better. Let's go upstairs, Mr. Rain. We have much to discuss. What's more importantly, we need to celebrate. Besides, I have a few more dance moves to show off. And got a little achievement there for that. That's cool. Alright, check the country overview first. Military. Alright, so now we're up to an adequately equipped military and a modernized air force. Which is pretty sweet. Okay, wow, a bunch of stuff in diplomacy. Alright, got an embargo from United Cantana, which makes sense. Uh, neutral, we're under Arcasian influence. Positives, we've got ATO military support and strategic alliance member. So those are all hopefully good things. Alright. So, from the news, we've got a whole sore post saying administration announces Sordland's ATO membership. President Rain has announced that Sordland will take the next steps to join ATO. The transition period will have no effects on citizens during the earlier days, however. Gradually, our economy and society will begin to be integrated. Militarily, ATO will now have substantial power over the decision-making of Sordish armed forces, which justifiably was not and will not be welcomed by many officials from the army. And Geopolitico, Sordland joins ATO. President Walker's sword and visit bore fruit as President Rain has announced that Sordon will be joining the ranks of ATO. The historic moment has been welcomed warmly by the member states of ATO as they congratulated Sordon. President Rain's lesbian counterpart, Prime Minister Alvarez, has called Sordon's joining to ATO the best thing to happen in Eastern Mercopa in the last century. Over the span of the next couple of years, Sordon will economically, militarily, and diplomatically integrate with the rest of the pact. Although the membership comes with a myriad of responsibilities, the changes will improve Sordon as a whole in almost every aspect. On the other side of the world, the leader of CSP, Chairman Meleniev, called the Sordland's ATO membership a threat to the stability of the world. Chancellor Hagel refrained from making a comment. Sweet. Alright, well, I guess we're just going to keep hanging out in Whole Sword, and uh, so I'm going to hang out home now. After weeks of late nights, Monica, Ciara, and the Women's Rights Commission had succeeded in presenting their bill before the Assembly, only for it to fail. I left work early, expecting my wife would be in need of comfort. But it had been hours since I got home, and she still wasn't there. I was dozing on the couch after yet another frozen TV dinner when I heard the key turn the lock. Monica stumbled into the hall. Honey, I'm home. Uh, I kissed her. Her breath smelled like gin. I was just having a few drinks with Ciara. We're so close to winning, Anton. Those goddamn assembly pricks ruined it all. She collapsed onto the couch and buried her head in her hands. You could have invited me to the commiseration session. Oh, you would have found a better way. Somebody had to look after Tiana. <laughs> My god, I'm starting to see what I put you through for all those years. Get used to it, baby. 
Seriously, Anton, this is what I want to do. I have never felt so alive. What, drinking? I opened my briefcase and pulled out the photograph I'd taken from my old office on the fifth night with Vader. Oh, wow, look at us. <laughs> Who would have thought we'd wind up as sort of this most powerful couple? Oh, I always had an idea. We stayed curled up on the couch till late, talking and reminiscing about old times, and so Monica took my hand and wordlessly led me upstairs to the bedroom. Well, oh, jeez. Okay. Whole ton of things popping here. Alright. Alright, so what is this? Uh, Feti Ejal. Uh. Okay, is this Swordish. Swordish Bluedish Rider? Used to be the leader of the Workers' Party. Okay. And he was apparently assassinated. That's that's cool. Alright. Well, let's look at the reports first and then we'll hit the news because I'm sure that's going to be in there. So I guess let's uh, go to Agnolia first. Uh, Agnolia single standing, signals standing with Swordland. E.M. Van Horten sent in a statement that Agnolia will stand against Volkslandian harassment together with Swordland. He condemned Chancellor Hagel for trying to dominate the Markian Sea and warned us of a potential war. Fantastic. And Volksland is just going to be the opposite. Uh, Volksland increases naval presence in Grey Strait. It is being reported that the Volkslandian Navy has increased its presence along our shores, particularly at the Grey Strait. The already massive fleet patrolling the Markian Sea is now accompanied by a second one. According to our intelligence, Volksanians are also installing defense systems with offensive capabilities on the southern shores. This poses a great danger for whole sword and the whole country. Awesome. Alright, uh, I thought I saw something down there. Yep, yes it did, right there. One-on-one -on -one interview from Kyrie. Uh, Lisa and Glad organized an interview for the presidency on the intention internationally renowned one-on-one. -on -one. Famous journalist Thomas Sacker will be asking him questions. Curve 101 and Thomas Sacker will arrive next week in Lock Haven from Cairo. Cool, I think. And Connery at? The uh, Volksanian Navy spotted in full force in Helioland. According to intelligence reports, Volksanian Navy gathered in full force around Helioland, blockading the island. The reports warn about a possible violent conflict between Agnolian and Volksanian forces. The Swordish Navy and Connery at is on standby. Nice. Okay. Yeah, five news things. Ooh, but our economy bumped back up a couple points. So that's potentially good. All right. From Whole Sword Post, uh, Swordland's largest military parade ever. President Rain has announced Swordland's largest military parade ever to display the strength of his Swordish armed forces to the world. During the glorious day, tanks will roll, jets will fly, and our soldiers will march. Young and old, Swordish citizens will come together to once again cheer for our soldiers. Parade will send a clear message to our enemies. Beware. President Rain will be joining the parade with the motorcade and drive through Victory Avenue. And Swordland today. Workers' Party leader poison. The leader of the Workers' Party of Bludia is rumored to be poisoned by a nerve agent on his way from Deer uh, to Sarna. The attack came after a speech in Deer when Ejal promised to clean Swordish politics from Solism. According to our sources, he was taken to a local hospital in Sarna where he lies in a coma. Officials from the police of the investigations are underway to find the attackers. Okay. And from the, uh, the radical, nationalists attempted to assassinate Ajal. Fetty Ajal was poisoned on his way to Sarna to deliver a campaign speech yesterday. According to the reports, he is hospitalized in criti uh, critical condition. The attack is suspected to come from a nationalist organization, which had most likely targeted Ajal due to the massive increase in the votes of the Workers' Party of Bludia. A sick attack on Ajal's life is a continuation of the deep-rooted fascism of Swordish political elite. Previously, it was Circus. Now, it is Ajal. Next, it will be all of us if we allow this to continue. 
and Workers Party Blue Deer record uh, uh, record membership number. Sorry. According to the numbers released by the Workers Party Blue Deer, there's a massive increase in the membership, breaking a new record for the party. Well, uh, the polls also show that the popularity of the party has reached new heights in Berja and is expected to finish the first or the second in the region of Berja. Betty Ajal said in a public statement, the Workers' Party is leading a great journey to the Maroon Palace to finally bring about the People's Revolution. Those who are at the top may continue ignoring us, but the people respond to them in the polls. And from Geopolitical, uh, Swordland creates peace line to avert war. Following Rumberg's demands for reparations from Swordland, tensions have increased dramatically between the two countries. Yesterday, a Swordish warplane has been shot by the Rumberg anti-air systems, and all of the pilots on board have been killed. To spread the information from Rumberg, a Swordish warplane has trespassed in Rumbergian airspace, where so whereas Swordish military reports that the plane was inside Swordish borders when it was shot. The international community is unclear of the certainty of the reports from both sides. Thankfully, Swordish administration approached the incident calmly and established a peace line to avert war between the two countries. President Rain has been commended internationally for his efforts to de-escalate the situation and maintain peace. Nice. Okay. So, let's go to Onrica for an election speech. This is probably going to go poorly. The sun was starting to peek through the blinds of my suite in the Grand Chariot Hotel in Onrica. I hadn't slept at all that night. I was too busy thinking about how I'd rally my party's conservative base if today's election kicked off. I was just pulling on my clothes, and two sharp, soft, sharp knocks came at the door. Lucian. Good morning, sir. Morning, Lucian. Lucian unclasped his briefcase and took out a small, disc-shaped device. After scanning the room with it, he gave a satisfied nod. I have just received the final results of your investigation into the Obgard. Well, don't leave me in suspense. Lucian pulled out a folder and opened it. Mrs. Morgan's task force suspected all guard members of multiple cases of corruption lobbying, but when they looked deeper into it, they found something truly shocking. The old guard, with the tacit approval of Talking Soul, directly arranged the assassination of Bernard Circus. You're joking. Since you took office, their goal was to protect Soul and his constitution. They needed an event extreme enough to distract you from making reforms. Of course, when that didn't work, they had other ways of impeding you. Who was involved in this? The main conspirator was Lilius Graf. And then there are dozens of assembly members and thousands of government officials who may have been aware of the assassination plot and helped cover it up. Lilius Graf will be a primary target. It's time she left politics, once and for all. Alright, sir. I'll get to work on it when we return to Hullsword. Now that that settles, I'll let you prepare for your rally. I almost forgot. The Archpriest of Deer couldn't be present today, but wanted to relay a message of support to you and your family. What did he say? I bless the rains down to Anrika. Hmm. That's... That's a bad joke. <laughs> Love it. Alright, uh... Lucien left the room. I finished putting on my tie and reread my notes for the morning speech. A few hours later, I was waiting in the wings at the Norzord Auditorium in Anarka. In the audience were several thousand of my conservative supporters. I was wearing an FC Anarka scarf to please the locals, and remind them that I was still part owner of the team. Behind the podium hung a swordish flag with a giant banner that read, Uh, let's go with that one, for United Swordland. Everyone cheered as I walked on stage. Though Mayor Curtin Lest was now part of the opposition as a member of the NFP, it seemed most of Anarka was still on my side. Gloria gave a short speech introducing me. Then it was my turn. I stepped behind the podium and took a deep breath. Ladies and gentlemen of Anarka. Uh, let's see. Past three and a half years, we've seen our country tested over and over. Mm. Let's try this one. Yet the Reign administration stands strong, ready to lead Sorland's greatness once more. Uh, oh boy, okay. Um. 
Together, we will get the economic crisis under control. As protests threaten to tear us apart, I promise I'll restore harmony. Uh, I will continue to defend swordsmen against threats, whether internal or external. And let's see. Uh, let's go with number two. I remain committed to stamping out the corruption that has plagued Swordish politics for far too long. Thunder supplies erupted. Swordland has changed, but the USP remains as strong as ever. I have devoted an unprecedented amount of effort towards making Swordland's economy the best in the world. We will not lose, even though our economy sucks, but it's okay. I and Vice President Tory shall lead Swordland into a bright new era. Aurora shook the hall. Uh, it is time, my fellow swords. A new dawn is upon us and begins right here and right now. So remember, vote rain 57. The audience roared as streamers shot out of cannons behind me. Tooth to tooth, eye to eye. FC Anarka. Step down from the podium. Cheesy way to end that speech. I like it. I don't know if going after uh, Lilius is the best option or not, but I I don't like her anyway. So screw it. Let's go after her. And what happened here? The economy just went from like four, almost max. That is that is fantastic. Okay. All right. Well, let's check some of these and see what's up. Uh, oh, Minister of Interior is empty, so we must have kicked Lilius out. That's fantastic. Economy. Wow. Okay, that exploded. All right. So the Burge, uh, Burge economy is stabilizing. Still dealing with racial tensions, but the economy is stabilizing thanks to our investments. Uh, successful investments have created thousands of jobs. Uh, new production is increased. Our, uh, yeah, new production has increased our output. Lauren has become a major hub for production and commerce. And Island is now a massive fish export and tourism hub. Wow, okay. Gotta admit, I, I did not think that some of these moves would actually pay off. But that the economy is almost maxed out. Our budget went up one somehow. Hmm. This is fantastic. Okay. So let's look at the news here. Uh, from the Whole Sword Post. Uh, President's wild conspiracy theories validated. The president has gone off the rails this time, insisting that Colonel Tarkin's soul fostered a deep state conspiracy among loyal government officers, including Interior Minister Lilius Graf, certain members of the Supreme Court, that ultimately culminated in the assassination of Communist Bernard Circus. Unfortunately, with Justice Minister Nia Morgna fully in league with Rain Scheme, it seems the President may be successful in putting some, if not all, of these figures behind bars, and will keep you updated on this tragic turn of events. Yeah, okay. Sound of corruption and uh, state-sponsored murder is a tra uh, is a good thing. I mean, according to these guys. Yeah, keep the whole sword post. All right, Swordland today. Old guard conspirators found guilty. Holding true to his promise to root out corruption in the Swordish government, President Reign has secured a guilty verdict for those members of the political old guard who plotted to assassinate beloved MP Bernard Circus. They are tried at the Justice Ministry, where anti-corruption -corru police head, Nia Morgna, convened the results for task forces investigation into the old guard and declared them guilty of treason. We at Swordland today rejoice to see these traitors booted out of our government and hope they enjoy their nice, long stay in an Intel Rock prison. Right. Lockhaven Times. Uh, circus assassination organized by Old Guard. The assassination of Bernard Circus, the inaugural ball event that came to define much of President Reign's administration, has just been revealed to be the result of a plot between the Young Swords and certain individuals in the so-called old, old Guard, the long-serving government officials in league with the policies of Colonel Tarkin's soul. 
The truth about the assassination was revealed following a long simmering investigation by the anti-corruption police, a new task force helmed by Justice Minister Nia Bournemouth. Alright, Red Youth and Young Swords Fight Red Youth and Young Swords were once again involved in a large-scale fight. This time, the issue is the vandalism of a soul statue in Mock Haven. Yesterday night, according to a Young Swords member who wishes to stay anonymous, said that he had seen Red Youth members put a clown wig and nose on the soul statue at the city center. On the other hand, an anonymous Red Youth member denied the claims. Both sides seem to have their own versions of the story, with no evidence from either side. What well, doesn't require evidence, however, is injured 14 people dying in hospitals. We just wish that one day they will be able to go past the differences and make peace with each other. And from the radical, a deep state conspiracy revealed. We hate to say we told you so, but we were right all these years. The President's anti-corruption police force has revealed the existence of a vast range of conspiracy among the old guard, including Interior Minister Lily Scroft and certain members of the Supreme Court. It was this unholy alliance that, together with the Young Swords, plotted the assassination of MP and literary icon Bernard Circus at the beginning of Reign's term. Rumor has it that Tarkin Soul, to whom all involved other political popularity, is the ultimate mastermind behind this. We wouldn't be surprised. And Young Swords oppress Blutish protesters. When is it enough? How long can we stand tolerant of the brutality of this fascist organization? Bernard Circus had fought for his country, for the rights of every sword. In return, he got a bullet from this nationalistic group. Right now, the same group is beating and chasing away Blutish protesters only because they are not originally sword. Still, the administration hasn't lifted a finger. Is this the democracy we fought for a long time ago? Is this the democratic values we got after going through a civil war? And I wouldn't say I haven't done anything. I'm trying to help out the, the Bludes, but I don't know. Apparently I haven't done enough, but we'll have to see what else we can do. Alright. And, actually, that feels like it's probably been long enough for today. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.